This is the Powerlifting America podcast, and today we've got a quick check-in with the 11-time world champion, the GOAT, and the queen of all the GOATs, Bonica Brown. 13 days out from Sheffield, the most important event in powerlifting history, we talk about her prep, her absolute dominance in 2022, breaking the classic and equipped squat world records in a matter of a month, and so much more. If you know Bonica, you know she doesn't hold back. But before I bring her in, make sure you don't miss Sheffield. Tickets are still available. Click the link in the description below for more information. Thank you to SBD and Aleko for their continued partnership with Powerlifting America. If you're looking to compete in drug tested powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or you want to compete with the best in the world, make sure you go to powerlifting-america.com because Come a member, check out our event page for all of our upcoming events and our store page for PA merch, and make sure to follow us on Instagram at powerlifting underscore America. Okay, with that, let's get to this quick check-in with Bonica Brown. All right, I got with me the GOAT, and actually the queen of all the GOATs, 11-time world champion, Bonica Brown. Welcome to the Powerlifting America podcast. What's up, Bonica? Hello, Paul. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? I am doing well today. Nice, nice. How is prep going for Sheffield? Oh, it's getting down to the wire, getting the final numbers from my coach Chell every week. And it's like it's getting deload, deload right now. Nice. And you're feeling good, you're physically all good. Oh, yeah. I, I feel great. Like, of course, like, mm -hmm. you know, there's some normal muscle soreness after workouts, but mm -hmm. all my lifting, it's been strong and proud of myself and proud of my body. That's awesome. Yeah. We've been hearing, you know, I've been interviewing a lot of the Sheffield athletes. Everyone's two weeks out right now. Um, you're 13 days out to the day. So it's super exciting. And, um, everyone is in that mode of like being like two weeks out, um, from a competition in their prep and everyone's like a little bit sore and banged up and just waiting for this taper to come, um, and to carry them off to Sheffield. So, um, so how, how excited are you being two weeks out for being a, the biggest powerlifting, most important powerlifting meet ever, biggest money prize ever in, in powerlifting? Um, how excited are you to be a part of it? It's an honor to be part of it. You know, I keep telling people like the first one was technically 2020. And then I was like, I was telling a friend last night, if COVID just happened just two weeks later, like, you know, the start of everything, I'm like, at least we would have been there. And I'm like, you know what? If I was stuck in the UK, that's okay. That would have been cool. Okay, not cool and cool at the same time. But it's like three years later, finally, we get to have a chance to go at it. And it's just an honor to be able to re-qualify to be able to go. And, you know, obviously it's a different structure than what 2020 was. Now 2023, it's a different structure. Um, How was but it's it exciting. So, so tell us, okay, so this year, I think most people are pretty familiar. It's based on the percentage that you break the world record by, and then you, there's payouts yeah. for breaking individual lifts as well as the total is the, how the ultimately the big prize is determined from the total, yeah. how far you break the, the total world record. How was it before in, uh, in 2020? Do you remember? Oh, now I got to think about it because I just had it like exited in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I too, I'm, I'm going blank. It's all good. Uh, I, I remember too, um, I think it was something different. I'm not sure, but, um, but regardless, it's very different from how it's you would, different. It, how you would do a normal powerlifting meet. Um, yeah. so you're not competing in your weight class against other people of the same weight, and you're not competing just on total. You're competing on percentage of the world record. So it kind of gives you every single athlete an incentive to just go for the biggest world record total they can get. There was multiple ways. There was like first through fifth. I think it was still going to be by formula. And okay. I was like, well, as a super, I didn't have a chance with that at all. Any of these formulas, a super is out of it. Okay. And you're then it was, yeah, 2020. It's like okay. it was slowly clicking. Then like first through fifth or something like that, it was who was the biggest total. And then That's there was right. also incentive of breaking the records also. Mm -hmm. And so I, I feel two, two to three. Definitely the first through fifth by total and breaking the records. I know that was definitely correct. Yeah. I I feel pretty confident it was still by coefficient through so, first through fifth. So I what do you think, think about this as far as a scoring model? Um, the current, you know, the, the Sheffield that's happening here in 13 days. What do you think about the kind of incentives that it creates? Because it's kind of cool that it gives you a meet where you're not just trying to do the minimum amount to secure the win, which is very much like your style of powerlifting. You're, you're not, <laughs> you're not trying to shatter world records by crazy numbers. You do the minimum to win. That's the smart move. That's why you have 11 time world champion. Um, but in this meet, it kind of no. incentivizes you to go all out. 
you know, at this rate. <laughs> Every competition, there's always background. I like, no, mm -hmm. to me, I always tell people you should go for full body max out. That's a powerlifting competition. Okay. And I just don't publicize everything or anything of what's going on in my life or injuries or whatnot. So like raw worlds, I had an injury. Mm -hmm. PA nationals, I had an injury. World games, I had an injury, but I don't publicize it because mm -hmm. I'm not going to be you know, like, no, you're, I'm going to look like the strong one, you know, this I'm good, <laughs> mm -hmm, but it's mm -hmm. like, um, each competition, there's always a background story. No, I believe in going full body max up, but obviously raw worlds, the incentive was to, you want to save the world record total. It's like, well, darn, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I'm like, I'm still going for the squat. I don't care. At least I wanted yeah. to chip it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so yeah, we'll get into the world's side of things and we'll go through like your, you had a mass, you had a huge year this year. Um, 2022 was a massive year for you. Yeah. Um, you broke a squat world record in both equipment and raw. So it was a big, it was a big year for you. You reclaimed, you know, your, your world title again. So that was huge, at, uh, uh, classic worlds in South Africa, but let's stick on Sheff Sheffield for just a little bit longer. Um, there's. <laughs> I, cause I'm not, I'm going to press you on, on some numbers on Sheffield. Um, so going into Sheffield, what are your goals? What are you trying to do? Break some records and win as much money as possible. That's what I want. I just want to win and show people like, I know there's people doubting me thinking I'm out of the game or I'm done or whatever. And it's like, no, I'm still here. You just don't know everything that's going on. Like I said earlier, it's just like, mm -hmm. nah. <laughs> it's just like i'm still here i'm still gonna keep on playing the game i just yeah. play it smart and not showing the whole entire playbook yeah. that's how it is <laughs> all right so so getting specific uh, some specifics on this um you're saying you want to break a bunch of world records are you yeah. is it is it in uh do you get paid like each time you break the world record so if you chip if you if you chip the squat world record and then chip it again on your third is that a possibility I don't think so. I think it's just overall. overall Unless I'm wrong, okay. which is cool. Okay. I don't know. So that <laughs> might I think everybody would be playing that game if yeah. that's true. <laughs> yeah, just chipping it like three times and then that's like three world records. I don't know if that counts or not. Um, we'll have to ask cool. someone from SBD. You have to get back to me on that if you if you hear something about that. Um, okay. But so the squat world record, we know like you you already own that record. We have mm -hmm. seen in training that you recently took your squat world record for double in training. So yeah. I think it's pretty safe to say that you're going to walk out of Sheffield with a new squat world record. Is that that's safe the to goal. say? Is that safe that's to say? That's the goal. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's, that's right. the goal. I've been trained real hard. Mm -hmm. I don't post everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so for people who don't know, the squat world record that you set in South Africa is 273.5. Um, yes. Your best ever is 276 in raw um, in competition. And then I saw you again, earlier this year, take 273.5 for a double. So I think it's, if we were going to bet on one of the safest world records in all of Sheffield to fall, I would probably bet on this one being the one. Um, cause <laughs> I it, love squats. Absolutely. And I saw you also hit a, uh, 265 single recently out in Las Vegas after walking 2,300 steps or 23,000 oh steps. <laughs> I am still impressed with my body. After yeah. that, I'm still impressed. I was dying. My feet were hurting. And like, while I was warming up, I was just like, I feel good. Like uh -huh. my body knows it's squat Monday. I'm like, I'm just like looking around. I'm like, well, I can get that guy to spot me. Maybe uh -huh. I'm like, oh, I see a bodybuilder over there. Maybe I get that guy. <laughs> you know, I'm so they're trying to like strategize my workout of what to do. I'm at a, a different gym. And of course, like me walking in, I'm, I'm judged like that. Mm -hmm. Well, a female plus size, you mm -hmm. know, I, I was, I can tell, you know, yeah. So it's just like, I have to walk in with confidence, know what I'm doing. Dude, mm -hmm. even the squat rack was like almost given away because it was like this guy on a bench uh -huh. was like, oh, nobody's there. I'm like, yo, 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 I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> so then I had don't to take my, seriously fall. Don't take Bonica's <laughs> squat rack, man. Oh, I'm like, nah, I'm there. And the kid was like, oh, I just want to use the other rack anyway. I'm like, yeah, yeah, go over there. <laughs> nice. And then I just slowly added plates. 
Yep. And people were looking or they also, I could tell they were judging me that I was using a kilos and they're like, huh, I wonder if she knows how to use kilos. I'm like, yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you definitely do. Um, so, I mean, you hit a 265 on that day, that's eight and a half kilos, only less than the world record. So, mm -hmm. I mean, let's just, we can move on from squat because I think it's pretty safe to say you're going to break the squat <laughs> world record at Sheffield or pretty much if you show up and are, uh, you know, don't have some sort of catastrophic injury, you're going to break the world record. Um, I'll compete. <laughs> yeah. So let's move on to bench. Um, the bench world record is 164.5. Um, and it's actually owned by Mahalia Reeves, who set it this year at junior worlds in Turkey, which is amazing. And, but I've seen that you've done 155 before in competition. That's your best. So your, your competition best is already, mm -hmm you know, right there on the doorstep, only 10, only 10 kilos off. Um, well, that's a lot for a female. Is, it, is that right? <laughs> yeah. <it's>, yeah. <laughs> so do you think, you think the bench world record is, is out of play? Uh, it just depends. Like bench, it's always great in training, but it never wants to show up when it's game day. So it's just like, yeah. you know what? Let all the people think I suck at bench. I'm proud of myself. It's just, sometimes it just doesn't want to come into play. Like yeah. when it comes to competition, that's, I that's what it is with me. Yeah. And I haven't seen any big benches like on, on your social media or anything like that. 155 is a huge yeah. bench. Um, so yeah. don't get me wrong. Um, but man, that bench from Mahalia, 164.5, that's a hell of a bench. Yeah. And, um, she's got a bright future in the sport for sure. Um, but with, with your 155, like, okay, so we'll, we'll say probably not going to break the bench world record, but it's possible. You never know. It's just fine. So like for me, bench is just like, just be there, build a total. That's my gameplay when it comes to a competition. It's always building a total, build a total, but also push your body to the limits to build that total. So like, it's a combination. We just play it smart. Um, so it's just building a total. That's what my gameplay was in South Africa. Build a total, okay. build a total. That's what it was. Well, you, you built the total by, you chipped the world record, um, on, on squat. And then, yeah, mm -hmm. you went three for three on bench, Well, we'll go through all, everything that happened in South Africa. Mm, I but, only got two out of three third bench. I failed. Uh, in Africa. according to open powerlifting, you got your third. Bench oh, I did. Yeah. Oh, I did. And then let um, me check. I'm also on good. I don't memorize. I got, I got them both open at the same time. I'm, I'm on top of it. 152.5. You hit, I don't memorize. Oh. you hit your third. Oh, okay. It was only 152. Oh, and there's just, oh, I just, oh, I thought I failed it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I had an eight for nine day. Uh, yes. I just, and you that were, was just the last deadlift. You were eight uh, for eight. You were eight for eight. Huh. To the final deadlift. Uh, hey, well, I don't memorize stuff. <laughs> it's all right. We'll, don't worry. We'll go, we'll I go through myself. it. We'll go through it all and we'll, we'll remind everyone and, uh, including remind yourself. me too exactly <laughs> um okay so then going on to deadlift um so the world record is 257.5 the best that you've done in competition is 250 raw according to open powerlifting and no, that's right <laughs> however you took 260 for your third attempt at classic worlds in south africa in 2022 and you got two white lights and then it was overturned and so you, you got two white lights and it looked, it, it looked good. I mean, you, there was like at the very top, there was kind of like, you could maybe say that there was like a tiny hitch or like a tiny, um, bobble or something at the very, very top of it. But yeah. I mean, it moved really fast. And for being a full 10 kilos above your competition best, it moved really well, really, really well. Yeah. So I'm excited to see. <laughs> and so I'm very excited to see 260. Oh, so you did that conventional at Worlds and then you mm -hmm. pulled sumo at World Games. Is that right? Mm hmm Okay. Okay. So are you pulling sumo or conventional at Sheffield? I can do both. <laughs> For the audio only audience. Uh, <laughs> she's giving me a mystery, a mystery face. Um, the the hmm. shrugging hands. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So just so everyone is clear, you pulled 260 uh, at Classic Worlds in 2022. Conventional, mm -hmm. little tiny bobble at logout got two whites, but it, then it was later overturned. But nonetheless, a full 10 kilos above your PR and it moved well. Um, so the the world record that you're trying to hit at Sheffield is 257.5. I think it's a pretty safe bet to say that you're going to break that world record. What do you think? Uh, just build a total. 
build a total. Because <laughs> honestly, I will sacrifice deadlifts when it comes to deadlifts. Uh -huh. We'll just see what the percentage is okay, of okay. winning the that most money. Sense. That makes so, sense. So like that was strategy, honestly, at 2018 Worlds in Canada. Um, Bill, he's like, yo, if she pulls this number, you know, she'll get the instead of prize money from, you know, at the time USAPL. I'm like, let's do it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'll sacrifice deadlifts. So that's why, like, I know people judge me on deadlifts and I've had ups and downs with deadlifts. But like, yeah. like I said, every competition, there's a scenario background of what's going on. Like you, like not just you, but like you yeah. guys only see that nine minutes on the platform. You don't know what's going on in the back. You yeah. don't know what's going on with that 10 minutes in between each lift or the, you know, the hour and a half before competition starts. You don't know the hour before weigh-ins. You know, I can just keep going. Like, yeah, you yeah. don't know what's going on. You just see that mm -hmm. little one minute on the platform, if it's even a minute, you know? Yeah, exactly. Which it usually isn't. But, so, but um, yeah, I mean, so, okay. I think then you've kind of alluded a little bit to the overall goal is, you know, the biggest cash prize of the entire meet is to yep. break the world record total by the highest percentage. And yep. like I said, the world record total is 671.5. You've already done a 675 before. And like we said, you already took your squat world record for a double earlier this year. You've tried to go 10 kilos over your personal best at, at worlds on, on a deadlift and we'll see where your bench falls. So I think it's safe to say you're going to break the world record total by at least 10 kilos would be my guess at least. So, all right, that's my prediction. Anyway, she's not going to tell us. She's not going to tell no, us. No, because you don't want to think about it because you don't want to mm. be so transfixed on a number, even with newbie yeah. lifters, you know, newbie competitors. And it's like, mm -hmm. I'm well seasoned. And like yeah. the thing that people keep thinking, they think I'm just 2013 forward. It's like, no, there was a five-year hiatus. And you know, before that I was yeah. highly competitive from 2004, to 2008. And so like, I'm well seasoned in the sport and I'm old school. Yeah, and exactly. so that's just something that it. just lifters don't think or do. I love and, how old school you are. Yeah. I mean, I try to ask you about your numbers and you never will tell me anything. Um, So I think it's really cool. And, and just for people who know, like we've been doing these recap shows and we've been doing all these podcasts and we've been on open powerlifting, big shout out to open powerlifting. We wouldn't be able to do this without them. You have the deepest uh, open powerlifting of any lifter that I've seen. And that includes Mike T, who I recently, you know, did a, we did a recap with about him. And you going back all the way to your first meet was in 2003. So yep. and there April is, 2003, I mean, no frills qualifier in Plainwell, Michigan. And you got to scroll a long ways back to get to that. There are a lot of entries in here because you, you compete raw as well as in single ply on the equip side. So her open, mm -hmm. your open powerlifting is very confusing. Uh, there's a lot of numbers <laughs> and it's all over the place, but, but there's also more, there's also the high school powerlifting meets I'd mm -hmm. done that wasn't USAPO sanctioned. And of yeah. course my Olympic lifting, you know, it's yeah. not on there. There's yeah. more than what meets the eye of what I've done. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, if anyone is listening to this, like we should, we'll put the link to your open powerlifting in the ah! description, in the description of this. So people can just go and click and see really one of the most storied careers in powerlifting and, and still going strong, breaking world records to this day. So it's very exciting to see you, what you're going to do at Sheffield. Um, all right. So we went over everything with Sheffield. Let's move on to a couple other things we've been talking a little bit about. And that's been, you had a hell of a year this year. You, you were the world champion in South Africa and classic. Uh, that's the raw side of powerlifting. And then you also competed in the world games and in our hearts and our minds, you were the, you were the world champion in the super heavyweights at world games. Um, unfortunately, similar situation, your last deadlift got two white lights and was overturned at both of these meets. And the other similarity is at both of these meets, you broke the squat world record at both of them as well. And so mm -hmm. it's the, the open world record at both of them as well. So let's yeah. start by talking about South Africa and talk okay. about the first meet that happened. Um, so going through it, you know, it, you had it yourself, we already talked about it. You were having a hell of a day. You went three for three on squat and chipped the squat world record, yeah. your own world record. Was that your own world record that you chipped or did someone else take it? Yeah, no, it was mine. I just yeah. like, I told Mike, I'm like, I just want to chip it. I just want to squat over 600. And he's like, let's chip it. I'm like, okay, let's go. I just Perfect. wanted, I just wanted to squat over 600 because that's just like a staple number. And, mm -hmm. you know, I just, I wanted to do it and I'm just, I'm very happy you know, yeah. that I got to do it. And I mean, you left enough on the table there that it's like, you, you definitely can chip it again at Sheffield. And that's all you need to do yeah. is chip it again because you stayed 
you know, fast forwarding to the end of this meet in South Africa, you stayed under the, the total world record, you know, so you yes. left that where it was so that you can fully go all out and try and shatter that at, at Sheffield. Um, okay. So yes. then going into bench, like you mentioned before, you went three for three, you're having yourself a day here. Um, you hit 152.5, yeah. which you, you've hit two and a half kilos more than that before. So, but still that's right there with your, you know, to travel all the way to South Africa, squat a world record, and then bench press just two and a half kilos off your personal best and go three for three on bench. I'd say that's a very successful day. What do you hmm. think? Well, I, I know I've done more in the gym. So that's uh -huh. why it's like, man, I know I've done more and I've done better. So it's yeah. meh. <laughs> It's but, you're still, <laughs> but you're still proud of it. I think, right. I mean, the fact yes, that you would yes. go to South Africa and, and do that after squatting and all that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, for sure. So then going into deadlift, you know, you go two for two and then you put in 247.5, which uh, it's under the world record and everything. And your competition best raw is 250. So that's a pretty safe attempt for you. Now, the difference is you're yeah. saying is that when you did 250 before, was that sumo? Yeah, that was years ago at uh -huh. the uh, five bar showdown. Yeah. 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 But like, yeah. I've just had ups and downs with deadlifts and injuries. And I was just like, couldn't deadlift or something was wrong. And so it's just like, it was always kind of slacking behind mm -hmm. because of whatever's preventing me from training to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's all. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of it. <laughs> You know, and yeah. able to do both sumo and conventional. Like I can't do one, I can do the other, mm -hmm. you know, and still be putting up a number that, I mean, like you said, you locked yeah. it out. If it were a gym lift, it was like a very clean gym lift, only a yeah. tiny little bit of untidiness at the top that, you know, those super strict IPF referees, you got two white yeah. lights on the platform and then you got overturned by the jury. Um, of course, so, you know, but always but hardest on the female lifters. But still, and Becky, Becky Holcomb can, you know, fess up to that too. Like Dubai yeah. in 2019 for us. Oh, yeah. The referees didn't like any supers on deadlifts there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, sass, <laughs> salt. <laughs> oh, well, it gets even saltier, right? I mean, we're talking I know. about in this case, you had the world record, you had the, um, you had the world title wrapped up, even with just your second deadlift. You know, you had a, over a 20 kilo lead on the second place finisher. So, you know, you, you're there to get a world title and to break chip the squat world record and have yourself a day, which you had because you did lock out that conventional pull 247 at the end, but, you know, eventually gets overturned. No big deal, right? I think coming off of this meet, were you, you know, super frustrated or anything like that? I mean, you, you basically checked all the boxes you want to check. So there's nothing really to be too unhappy about uh, except for that that overturn there's a but oh no they overturned it and then sweden had a chance for the win okay so okay. to me i'm like oh okay ipf personal vendetta against me got it <laughs> <That's Leach>. me. <laughs> yeah yeah which <laughs> so she had a chance she did load up her deadlift um but she only got it to her knees and I mean, that was an absolute Hail Mary because I'm looking at the score sheet with from her and mm -hmm. she only took a, you know, seven and a half kilo jump from her first to her second. And then she had to take a 22 and a half kilo jump from her second mm -hmm. to her third. So that was definitely, but you're right. I mean, technically game's not over until the final play. Yep. And um, yes. she did have a chance and I'm sure you felt a little something in the warm up. Oh, room. yeah. What, were you watching that? <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah, I did. But like, I, I knew that like, she has done, she had less than like in her hands, like in training. And uh -huh. so it's just like, well, the rule is when it comes to Dallas, I got to get to the knees. Like how's the speed to the knees? How's everything going to go? Um, and so, yeah, I was watching. Um, so it was nerve wracking and, mm -hmm. um, you know, but obviously like she loves deadlifts yeah. and like, I know she's training hard for it and she did, um, uh, which one was the, Western, the Europeans, Europeans, you know, okay. and she reclaimed her, uh, deadlift record. Like she owns it now. Uh, so yeah, no, she's a strong, she's cool. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but it was nerve wracking at the time. Yes. 110%. Yeah. And so then you're watching her and then what did it feel like when, you know, you saw the bar slowing down and she misses it. You're a world <laughs> of course, anybody really like, okay, Sheffield. <laughs> okay. I did it. You know? And like, yeah. obviously, 
you know, that was like the first big competition, you know, since 2019 because 2020 mm. COVID and then 2021 USAPL gets kicked out. I couldn't go to worlds. So mm. it's just like, it's years later, finally get to be on the platform and, mm -hmm. you know, it was, there was a lot of emotions at once. Was so that a was a pretty sweet victory for you. I mean, in the end, yeah, I mean, nice. you know, so, so you you're in the warm up room and you're crowned champion and basically in the warm up room as she misses that third. And so, I mean, was it just a big sigh of relief and you just felt amazing or did it take some time? Like, does it not sink uh, in until you're on the podium and the national anthem is playing or what? The podium and the national anthem. It's just like, you're just hearing your name and that's when it sinks in more than anything to me. Yeah. yeah and so definitely. how special was it at, in South Africa to be back up there on that podium and have, you know, the Star Spangled Banner playing for the first time in whatever it was, two or three years because of COVID. Um, and you were the one who made them play it, you know? And so how does that, how does that make you feel when you're up there? Um, I'm a cry baby every time I hear the national anthem and honestly, all these new lifters. Yes. I'm going to have a little sass here. I'm like, they will never understand what us old school lifters had to go through, especially my 2004, 2008 years. Uh -huh. Look at the roster of who won and look what national anthem you always had to hear. I, I won't get too sassy. And yeah. so it's like when you hear your own after those years of like all the weight classes, men and women, you know, it's like you have to hear a certain anthem eight times, Yeah, you know, or nine. It's yeah. just it, it's so like so my first world uh, equip. Well, I'm sorry. First raw worlds in 2014. Like I that was I was the biggest cry baby there to hear it because it was just mm -hmm. like you know, talking to Priscilla, I'm like, this is what it feels like to hear our anthem on the podium. And like, I was just like, ah. and, knowing, <laughs> and kind of just knowing too, that like, you're responsible for why yeah. that anthem is playing. Like that has to be so amazing. Um, all the athletes have been talking about how important that is and uh, how cool oh, that yeah. is. And so just enlighten us, younger people who haven't come into the, who came into the sport later, what was the anthem that you had to hear over and over again that you didn't want to yeah. hear anymore? say it just look at look at the <laughs> i gotta get in trouble okay I, that's right. what i said look at the results from like women's worlds from 2004 2008 <laughs> right, there's one country right. you always had to hear that you know and so like some of us lifters were it's just ingrained in our heads like the tune of how it goes or oh it's played in rocky four <laughs> yeah i think the country the, cur the, the current country name starts with an r we'll say all right and yeah we'll all right <clears throat> yes you don't want to test the powerlifting gods that was one no. of the things i wanted to say earlier that's why no. i don't say numbers or whatever it's like mm -hmm. you don't mess with the powerlifting mm -hmm. gods you know you um, don't they're always watching <laughs> I found that very interesting. Mike Z also mentioned that to me recently. Um, yeah. you know, because we, we were interviewing athletes and there were athletes that were very confident about the numbers that they were going to hit. And he said, never test the powerlifting gods. Is that an equipped? Never. Is that something that people say a lot on the equipped side? Yeah. Yeah. And like raw lifters, I'm like, you should listen to some of us equipped lifters. I, I play both sides of the court, of course. Yes. yes. And no, you don't that. test the powerlifting gods. Like even in training, like there's days that like, so for me, I, I love having handoffs on bench mm -hmm. and I'm like, if I don't have handoffs, I'm not going heavy. And mm -hmm. then it's just like someone comes in and I'm like, thank you. Powerlifting gods. You guys, y'all's looking down on me. Let's bench, you know, Yeah. <laughs> it's no, you don't, there's just things you don't say. You don't jinx. You don't get too cocky, overconfident. Like, yeah, there's there's a gray line but it's yeah, just like I mean, you don't some yeah, of it some of it is just it. facts some of it is just facts like we the like your squat world record like we know that's on the table you know at a minimum like you can yeah. safely oh, say what that. number so, don't know don't know no, exactly that you we don't, don't we're not gonna no. test <laughs> no you do not test the gods you do not so, <laughs> so um let's go then a month later and and okay this is something to talk about is like you you're in the world games. It's basically almost to a day, two days later, um, a month and two days later is the world games yeah. back in Alabama. So tell us, how do you, you know, do that turnaround of, of like being at the highest level 
in classic in raw in South Africa, then you come home and you basically have like your four weeks out from the biggest equipped meet uh, almost of your life. I mean, definitely one of the biggest equipped meets it's world games and only happens every four years. I think there was some, was it was the last one delayed or canceled. And so it had been an even longer time since the world games. I don't remember yeah. with COVID yeah. disrupting things. So it was a very, very big deal. Cause there hadn't been one in a minute. So yeah. So talk to us about how you make that transition. Um, so that's the other thing. Like people judge my numbers from raw worlds. Well, I was juggling raw training and equip training at the same time before raw worlds. And so that's the other factor that like, people doubt me on is just, oh, she's not improving. I'm like, let's see you juggle raw and equipped and let me know how you feel when you're trying to perform both and you have to alternate workouts and make sure workout partners are there. And you're constantly pushing your body like equipped harder than raw. So you're, you're, you're doing like a, like a super load and then the D load because raw is like D load compared to equipped. So your body is going all over the place. Mm, and so it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> it is. And so and your, your coach is, who's your coach, your coach handles all this, all this programming and stuff, right? Yeah, it's Chell Buckland. Uh, he's a Norwegian uh, power lifter. Um, he dropped from the 83s to uh, 74s. Um, and uh, he's been a uh, raw classic champion before, um, a quick world champion. He has multiple mm -hmm. records, you know, multiple medalists. So um, he knows how so to yeah, program so and handle someone that's doing both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. And so it's like, I have somebody that understands the equip side, understands the raw side mm -hmm. and it's just communication. Yeah, I know I've been bad in the past and I'll say it that, you know, I was bad with communicating at times of how I feel or what's going on. Yes, I'm guilty. I'm not mm -hmm. perfect. I'm better now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but coming for. back from, uh, yeah, I shook hands with him when we were in, at World Games afterwards. I'm like, okay, I'll do better with programming. We shook hands. I took an oath, basically. <laughs> awesome. Um, but coming back from Alabama, um, I was uh, I was just like, all right, time to get back into equip training. But I jumped into it too quick, and I like I made myself sick. My body was mad at me, and mm. then like I had to take extra days off. And so I didn't get that much turnaround time, you know, to get from into, South, like I did and didn't. From South Africa yeah. to, to Birmingham where World Games were. Yeah. yeah, my friend, even my gym mates were mad at me that I was in the gym a couple of days after landing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were mad it's at me. Tough. <laughs> that was, that was some pretty serious travel over to South Africa. I mean, that's ah, about My travel was smooth. Was it? <laughs> Oh yeah. Mine was great. Other hand, Heather, you know, she had a hell of a time, but my travel, yeah. I like, cause I planned ahead. I'm like, I just knew what to do, what not to do. And it just mm -hmm. went smooth getting there. Yeah. So I, I was yeah. good. Okay. So you didn't have any, but I mean, does it wear on you? Like you, you fly all the way to South Africa, you kick ass at the meet, come back, you start to get a little rundown and that's probably why you got sick um, after South Africa and then <laughs> leading into world games. I was just stubborn and I just didn't take enough rest after competing mm -hmm. and traveling. Uh -huh. Cause I was just like, okay, game on, let's go. So when I came back, I think I came back on a Monday and I went to the gym on Wednesday and I shouldn't have. And so then I took the rest of the week off and then went back that following Monday. That's and all. And now you're three weeks out. <laughs> yeah, basically. And so that is just getting the final lifts in, honestly, any last minute, equipped focus training now now okay. it's just well like before raw worlds i did do some raw only weeks but like for many months before that every single week was a combination of raw and equipped so pre-raw wow. worlds yes there was raw lifting then world games it was just equipped wow wow so that um, was an adjustment that's amazing. I mean, I think anyone who knows uh, about getting into equipment and everything and like how different it is and stuff like that, like the fact that you do both at such a high level, I mean, it really, it's just a testament. Like you're just so ridiculously strong that it's like, and you're so experienced in both that it's like, you can just flip a switch and, and next three weeks later, kind break of. the squat world record in the squat suit. <laughs> kind of, but it takes a team to yeah. make an athlete and it's all thanks to my friends at Omaha Barbell. And I tell them, 
And I'm like, thank you for being here. Because if you weren't here, you're not helping me to become a champion. If you weren't here for this bench day, I would not have my heavy bench sets in. If you weren't here to help me with my suit, I wouldn't get a better squat. So I thank them after, you know, every workout. Or even like last week, you know, one of my buddies, um, one of the employees, though well, I recruited him in advance. I'm like, hey, can you give me handoffs? But he didn't even have to because somebody else came in. Thank you, powerlifting gods. Mm -hmm. But I still told him, I'm like, you didn't have to give me handoffs today, but the thought counts and matters. And you are going to be here for me. And I greatly appreciate it. And thank you for that. Like, even if they didn't do anything, I still thank them. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. it's a team of people. It's Zach. It's Danny. It's Madison. It's Kevin. Um, I'm running. Out, I'm like, it's Brandon. Um, yeah. You know, it's just Jared. There's multiple people, many more that I probably didn't say. It's all thanks to them. It's them. It's them that built me to be a champion. It's not just me or the gym owner, Brett, you know, yeah. it's getting equipment. It's them. That yeah. It takes a village. Me. I mean, I saw, I saw a post, I think Chelsea Savitt had a great post um, earlier this week yeah. where she basically said, you know, it takes a village. There's a lot of people that go into this and definitely on the equip side, you see that there's, there's a lot more, uh, takes a yeah. lot more people to help out and stuff like that. So that's, that's awesome. I mean, okay. So yeah. let's go into the lifts and then going in at world games, you, <laughs> You chip, I think, I, I don't know if you chipped or you just shattered your world record. Three, you hit up, you put up a new world record, 322 and a half on I squat. Beats me. 322 and a I half just, on squat. I roll the punches with James. With James and Jeff, My I tell mm. him how I feel, what's going on. Uh, we just do it. Yeah. My yeah. beats me. I don't know. I don't even know the number. <laughs> so, I don't know what I did. But anyway, you broke a world, you broke your world record, you know, your second world record in basically a month. Yes. Um, Seven you, something. You, I don't know you, what it is. You're the absolute queen of the squats on both sides of it's undisputed. <laughs> You've united the belts. Um, it's then you go into bench and you miss your bench opener. But then oh, it was a shitty handoff. Oh, I cussed. That was a crappy handoff. Mike T, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not Mike T, sorry, something. Mike Z. Gosh, I'm getting tongue tied. <laughs> uh huh. Was Mike Z the yeah. one that handed it? Yeah, it was a crappy handoff. And then James and I, we yelled at him. And I should have re-racked it. I should have done my own advice, re-rack it. But it's like, you know what? I can recover. I could do this. And it, it was just crappy all the way around. Like uh, the the bench, it was slick. It, it was it was hard all the way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is that a thing in Equipped where you see a lot more like bench openers being missed in Equipped than you do on the raw side? So is that you're a little more accustomed to possibly missing openers in, in that or no, you normally always make your bench openers. I, I wasn't prepared for that bench to be so slick. Honestly, I'll say it. I don't care. The, yeah. the bench that was in Dubai, what happened to that? That right. was sticky. It was awesome. It felt great. What happened to that design and pad and stickiness? Like it, I mean, like it was just like, you're there. Oh, oh, wow. I am here and like ready to bench. Yeah, that was great. And then, so this one, it was just slicker and it's just like, all right, got to adapt. The best athlete adapts to any situation. We got to exactly. think quick, but I'm going to jump to it. When it comes to my second attempt, I'm like, tick tock, tick tock. I'm like, what are you going to give me the press command? Like I'm motionless. And yeah. so I remember yelling. I'm like, that was a Joe Capolino hold. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we see how this is going against USA. I uh -huh. see how this is. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, that You're is how I up. felt. Yeah. That made me mad. So, I was just like, I'm holding it forever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, oh, was... I see other people getting quick commands. Okay. <laughs> is that a thing where you, you, so you retook your 210 opener. Is that, is that, is that what you normally do um, that you'll retake if you miss, if you miss a lift on a oh, technicality? Okay. Oh, of course. Yeah. Especially equipped, equipped like raw. You can like jack yourself up any which way and you can muscle it up and do whatever mm -hmm. equipment. You have that fine line that you have to stay in and world games, any other situation, build a total. We mm -hmm. got to get a number in. And then the third attempt, it was just a slightly build up on top of that to build the total. Ti build the, the, title, total. the title of this episode Build the total. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm game with that. I'm writing it down. <laughs> James uh, James and Mike knows that. <laughs> and so then you go up and you take 215, hit it, 
looks like it was pretty easy and it's yeah. a full five kilos below your best ever, but still you're, you're right there knocking on the door of your best ever lifts. Um, I've yeah, done more exactly. of the gym. <laughs> exactly. Of course. Of course. But I mean, you're having a day is what I'm saying. And once again, you've checked yeah. your squat world record. You've now you're very yeah. close to being at your max, even after missing an opener on bench. And then, yep. all right. So then how are you feeling going into deadlift? My body was there for me. And th this will make me cry. Uh, cause like I said, I was hurt. Like I had have whatever at the time, like I had an injury and this will make me cry. My body was there for me to fight. It was, it was there. And like, I'll just say this in advance. My body didn't fail me. It was the system of the mm -hmm. Federation is what failed me. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I felt great that day. My, my body was not hurting. It was ready for battle. It was ready for the win. And it did. And my body did win. Yeah, um, absolutely. It, it was, I felt great. And oh, so also this whole entire time would just like quit and start. So like, yeah. we all get our own platform to warm up on. And then what's cool, you know, I'm, I'm my sister from another country, Hildeberg, you know, she's across the way, Norway. And so my coach was there too. Of course, team Norway is helping team Norway. And like, you know, they all know that Chell's my coach. Like we, like Hildeberg and I, we've been like the uh, competitors since 2005 or six. Okay. Wow. Um, and so, well, no, I was, a, I was a 90 kilo. She was super heavy, but we'd have been around each other for that long. Yeah. And so like no bad blood, no nothing, but even shell. Cause obviously uh, he's my coach. He's like, your deadlifts are great. Jeff's like, your deadlifts are great. James, your deadlifts are great. I was on fire. Mm -hmm. It was there, mm -hmm. you know, and my body was ready. Yeah. So, it, okay. I was so feeling great. So you're feeling good. You come out, you put in yeah. 235, you just absolutely destroy it, you know, and we're yeah. starting off here a full, like 30 kilos below your best. It's a great place to start for an opener. Um, and then who's handling Jeff Douglas and James Townsend. Okay. And yeah, they're both, they're both open. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you go up 247 and a half, smoke that do 260 for the final, which would have been a 10. No, let's see. Would have just been a chip mm -hmm. under it was a chip under your own world record which you own the squat world you own the deadlift world record on the equip side by the way of 260.5 or you had so, it at one point i do no i don't Thought well your best ever was no it's the russian the russian has it i thought still so they must have taken it from you but you did do okay no that was a national record mm -hmm. i see this that was in a usapl meet you did a 260.5 so that's why i thought it was a world record oh. It's a, it's a, it must've been a national record. Anyway, you're going up to your personal best essentially. And you destroyed this, this third deadlift. I mean, I just rewatched yeah. it before we started this and <laughs> man, it made me mad because it moved super fast. I mean, it looked like you had like 10 more kilos in the tank or something like you, it, was, you, oh, it, yeah. it moved so fast and it moved and it was a clean lockout. I mean, there was absolutely nothing wrong with this deadlift. Um, now that number though, was that the exact number that you needed to win? Because tell us, yeah. tell for the people who don't know equip stuff, how is world game scored? It's, it's different than a normal. Oh, oh, it was just by good lift points this year. Okay. And James put in a number that I needed to win. Mm -hmm. That's why deadlifts, it'll be, it's always a sacrifice. Do you want a PR or do you want to go for a win? What, what is the goal on that third attempt? This is the win. Obviously it would have been better if I got my opener on bench. Um, Mm -hmm. like squat squat i wish i did more actually that day I, I had a certain number in mind and it wasn't there so that whatever i did on third that's why i don't remember it because it's like that's not the number i wanted that day yeah. i wanted more mm -hmm. um and so we just put in what we needed and my body was there to pull it and it did it did pull it absolutely oh, it and so tell us tell us then take us sort of like what <laughs> what do you think if if you were Okay. So it got two whites, one red, then it goes to the jury. Then there was like this long delay where the jury was split. And I mean, in the, it, we didn't know until basically awards are happening and you're walking out to get the medals right up to then there was announcements going on saying that the, the jury was still considering the final deadlifts and this and that and the other. So just kind of take us behind the scenes. Like, you know, what is going on at that point? You come, off, my opinion. you come off the uh, platform ecstatic, barreling Jeff yeah. Douglas. You pretty much take him out. 
um, yeah. with a full on like tackle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then what happens from there? Um, James, Jeff and I are celebrating. And then all of a sudden the announcer's like, oh, wait a moment. There's an overturn. Um, sorry, that last lift was bad. And it's like, what? Mm -hmm. And so then James goes over there to protest. And even Gaston Paraj got up on stage. Gaston called all referees to the stage, mm -hmm. as in anybody in the audience, anybody on the sidelines. Hmm. all referees were on the platform instead of just the jury, um, is what you're saying yeah okay and it's interesting how this competition had no instant replay um my personal belief is the jury i don't even know how to word it nicely <laughs> the jury was um like you know bias of course being American, I'm just going to say it, whatever, mm -hmm. I'll get in trouble. But it's just like other people say the same thing. I'm just saying what other people say. And there was two days prior, one of, and conveniently, this person was on my jury. Um, two days prior, I was trying to use the facilities to train the warm, like not a warm up room, but the, um, the weight room that's yeah, supposed yeah. to be accessible to athletes at all times the when the competition hall. venue yeah the yeah, training yeah. the training room oh my gosh why am i going blank the yeah. training room it's supposed to be open at all times correct you can mm -hmm. agree to that yeah 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 oh i was denied access and so were other lifters and mm. i was throwing a fit two days prior i'm like why am i being denied when this is my i you're costing me time and mm. you're making me wait and it was being hogged for an interview. And I'm like, I don't care. Like mm. this should be accessible to all athletes. Like there's other people out here waiting for this. I wait, wasted an hour of my time waiting for this interview to be done. And then while we were in this training room, we still had to be quiet mm -hmm. for the, I'm like, no, this should be done somewhere else. This yeah. isn't right. I will stand up for myself and other athletes. Yeah. And yeah, obviously that nipped me in the butt. I'm like, so I'm getting in trouble standing up for myself and other athletes for being denied access to something that's supposed to be for us. And oh, on coincidence. So the certain referee that was on the jury, like said snippy comments to me. I'm like, oh, but you being an American, I'm like, of course, it'd be OK if it was one of your fellow American lifters. I'm like, no, I would still throw a fit. I don't care who's in that room. Wow. Everybody's being denied access to this that should be available to all of us athletes to train before we compete. Mm -hmm. And you're taking that away. And then that person was on my jury. So obviously that person was a little, oh, I'm going to stick it to her every chance I get. And mm -hmm. that person, I was told they were trying to influence the referees to like, my, they were saying my second deadlift wasn't good. And mm -hmm. they were wanting a red light to take that away. Hmm. Yeah. That's, you know, and I felt like there was a lot of they jury got I felt like there was kind of a lot of jury intervention going on at world games. Um, it seemed like you, even throughout the whole thing that there was, that there, the jury was like coming in hot on a lot of things. Um, and so I wonder if the, you know, the jury was like just a little bit out of hand at that meet where it's like the jury is just a little bit too overactive, you know, because I mean, two to one, nine times out of 10, it's supposed to stand really. I mean, it, I mean, it depends on the lift obviously, but I mean, mm -hmm. You would think the two people, two of the three people who have the best view of it thought it was good. It's mm -hmm. probably going to stand most times. Yeah. Oh, no, it's just a grudge from two days prior. And then that mm -hmm. person got other referees to side. And, you know, um, it, it was just a personal grudge that was just being held against so, me. And then also the jury never talked to the three referees on the platform about the lift. Mm -hmm. There was no instant replay. It was, it's just like, what was the reason for it to be a bad lift? And there wasn't ever one officially given. So we all just go by hearsay that it's yeah. locked out. And then it's Lock like, out. how's that not locked out? Exactly. In quotes. Yeah. And I even show the lift to non power lifters and they're like, oh, that's a good lift. No, that yeah. was actually bad. And they're like, what's wrong with it? I'm like, exactly. exactly. So no, there's a lot of turmoil. I'm probably going to cause myself more trouble talking about it, but I'm just you, stating well, facts. Are you going to get fined by the IPF? I don't think so. Right? No, I mean, they'll can... just screw me over at the next future competitions. I'll just, they'll figure out a way to screw me over. Let's you know? hope not. Um, Let's hope 
Team USA figures out a way to get some uh, nice people on those juries as well. You know, we can all <laughs> well, play the game. The jury, the that the in period that jury yeah. um, should also have more veteran lifters. I mean, veteran refs on that uh-huh. jury because there was one person on there that was only a cat two for a month. Okay. And why is that person on the jury? Yeah. Why are they on a jury for only being the cat two? It should be all cat ones. You know, mm. all red ties. All red ties should be on jury. Never a blue. I don't care. That should it's be the, the world rule. games. It's the world games. It's exactly. the biggest event in powerlifting, you know. Um, so it's definitely should have the best officiating and it should have instant yeah. replay for sure. Um, because yeah. I think so, you saw yeah. so how did it feel then? Okay, obviously you were very disappointed. Oh, I was were... just standing there the whole time, like 15, 20 minutes standing there and my suit just gawking and, and disbelief. Yeah. And obviously seeing the Victor just like all happy and st- stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm which just is, like, which you really think you won? <laughs> which, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's I'll get it in trouble it saying that. I'm going to get in trouble no matter what. I'm going to get so much hate. I'm going to get hate. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to get so much hate right now. You're not going to get hate. Don't worry. Everyone <laughs> loves you. Everyone loves you, Monica. Don't, don't worry about that because that's a point that I wanted to get to was that, you know, you were feeling very disappointed, obviously. Yeah. And, you know, a day goes by. I remember I was reaching out to you on Instagram and stuff and DMs. And I, you know, maybe I was just straight up texting you as well and just, getting a little bit of feedback from you here and there about um, things, but you took some time to, you know, to turn your phone off and whatever. But in that time, so many people, there was a massive outpouring of support of people. I mean, from, from all different federations from all around the world who came out and were making posts about how this was a bullshit call and that that lift should have stand that and they were, everyone was reposting it. And they're like, this is super clean. This is as clean as it gets for a lift for a lockout. Um, and so I think that had to be nice when you finally turn your phone back on and you're kind of like, wow, you know, the community really was behind you with that, I think. Yeah. And I think it really Which is showed. So amazing. Yeah. Which is still amazing. It's still amazing yeah. to this day. Like I was talking to somebody about the other day. I'm like, this is the number one powerlifting discrepancy the number one powerlifting overturn probably ever in history and yeah to to get all the notifications and just everything from all over like it still yeah. touches me you know like yeah. i i'm like i didn't i didn't think people watched or they cared or what they thought like i just had no idea and it just opened to so many more people and it's just it overwhelming a- support it did help but yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're so old school. It's like, if I didn't win, then it was terrible. And I'm, you're never going to convince me otherwise. But there was a uh, that silver lining, you know, where it was like, there was such a, a huge outpouring of support. And I mean, now you can take that momentum. And this isn't the end. I mean, this isn't the end of the story. There'll be another World Games in four years. And now yeah. I can only imagine the fire that you have lit under you for training for the next four years to go oh, yeah. back and claim that World Games title. Oh, yeah. Exactly. It's just it's just like a rematch, just like in the Rocky movies. Let's yep. t- let's go for it. Take back that title. Yeah. It's a yep. rematch. That's awesome. I <laughs> rematch can't wait with Clubber. And I mean <laughs> Clubber Lang. <laughs> and I mean, I'm sure that this is probably fueling all of your preps. Like this is fueling your prep for Sheffield as well, that you want to come out there and you know, hit all three deadlifts and not get them overturned. Oh yeah. No. Well, like, yes. Like it was hard coming back to the gym. Like after the world games, I was just like, it was hard to show my face because I yeah. felt ashamed. Cause I know all the people that helped me and it makes me cry. Um, and I'm like, but no, they all opened me with welcome arms. Like Zach, he's not a hugger. He came and hugged me. Like he was somehow at the front desk and knew I was walking in. Um, and like mm-hmm. instantly hugged me instant mm-hmm. hug. Um, and it just took time. And like, no one's going to feel no one, no one will ever understand the feeling I'm like yeah. you have the win. And then it's just ripped away from you. Like you will never know that feeling. People yeah. do not know. And it's like, only thing I could say, it's like experiencing like the death of a loved one or like the personal is like going through a divorce. Like mm-hmm. that's as close as I can explain it to somebody, mm-hmm. but it's just more as an athlete. Like it's just so 
different. Heartbreaking, heartbreaking right? I oh, mean, yeah. because oh, I yeah. have still have just, tears. Come on. Because <laughs> I just watched the video, like I said. Um, and for anyone, you know, it's on Bonica's Instagram account, Bubbly Powerlifter. It's also on Powerlifting America's account. It's like a collabed post between us. And the face of the world world games champion running off the platform. You were so I mean, and you absolutely destroyed Jeff Douglas. Um, and it's amazing. And I, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it again. It's like, it's so emotional and everything. That's what I want to remember from the world games. You know, that's, that's my takeaway from it yeah. was like that moment right there was real. And, um, it, you know, it should have, should have lasted. The call shouldn't have been overturned and you're the people's champion. So, but yeah. it makes for a great story because now we'll get to see the rebound. We'll get to see what happens when Bonica faces adversity and how does she handle it? And uh, I think we're about yeah. to see at Sheffield. <laughs> exactly. That's so, so I'm going to get a lot of hate. It's going to come. It's going to come. <laughs> you're not going to get a lot of hate. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> going forward from there, you, you know, get back into training slowly. It obviously hurts. I remember even now, like I think on your captions of your Instagram, you know, you say things like, I, I still think about it, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, still makes me cry. Things like that. But you had an opportunity to go to equipped worlds in, in where was it? It was in Norway, right? Yeah. Uh, no, it was Denmark. Denmark. Viborg, that's right. Denmark. Viborg, Denmark. That's right. So you had yeah. an option to go to that. And what kind of went into your decision to pass on that? I wanted to focus on Sheffield. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I, it wasn't a necessity for me to go. Yeah. Like it was like, it's like, you know what, just take a step back and just focus on getting stronger raw. And the carryover will be there for equipped. And I, it was just like, it was just harder to cram in more training. You know, yeah. it was just so short and it's just hard. And it's just like, I want a true equipped training cycle proper, the best of my ability or something. Yeah. I, I just, I was just like, nah. And my head just wasn't in it. And I was just like, I just, my body was sore. I was just like, I need a break. Yeah. You know, I don't want to, cause that was July. Then it's just running right back into it. So August, November, October, that three months, like it's just, yeah. boom, that's the cycle. You have to go right into it. And then, and that, I would, just and then that would only be, you know, three months before Sheffield, four months, whatever. Yeah. Three, three, four. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, it would just, and then if you want to go back to worlds and do these things, like, you know, your Sheffield total will count. And so the very next meet that you can do is just open worlds and then you can go mm -hmm. to classic worlds or equipped worlds as well. Are you thinking about doing equipped nationals in Scottsdale? Uh, I don't know because it's one week. I think it's one week out. Work. No, yeah, yeah, the date doesn't work out at all. Exactly. It doesn't so. work. So it's just like, whatever, yeah. you know, yeah, that was yeah. the other reason. It just doesn't work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so right, it's definitely. okay. Yeah. That's because, okay. Because you're going to go defend your, your raw world title um, yes. in Malta. So, well, we got to right. qualify first. <laughs> exactly. You got to qualify first. Yeah, qualify. I love the attitude. 11 time yeah, world champion not, doesn't take anything for granted. No, I qualify. <laughs> you do not take anything for granted. Okay. So I just got a couple of uh, other questions for you, and then we'll go through some, some kind of fun, da, fast, da, da. rapid fire ones. Um, Tristan Nazelrod recently said on a podcast that, you know, whenever your name was brought up, that he really admired your positivity in the warm up Ooh. room. And oh. how you cheer on other lifters and coach other lifters, like in the later sessions. I think that you might have been referring back to Austin last year when I think you lifted yeah. and then you, you also handled someone like right after that as well. Marty. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then you're, you know, you're bubbly power lifter. So your personality around the powerlifting competitions is very bubbly and outgoing, and you're talking with everyone. And um, I just wanted to. <clears throat> mentioned that he mentioned he mentioned you on king of the list Aww. podcast and he mentioned that and just what goes into this kind of mindset of, for you about like being so positive and optimistic all the time even when you face you know major major adversities and bad calls and things like this uh well thank you tristan um i love tristan he's such a great guy i'm like gosh i don't even know when we first met like years like, mm -hmm. I loved it how we were on a plane together, like him and his girlfriend. I'm like, oh, let's all get in the road together. And like, mm -hmm. um, and I always cheer him on. Um, like, um, I'm waiting for like more people. Like I just saw, 
like some more recaps from Pilot to American Nationals. So I'm waiting to yeah. do a fun day of like, look at all my strong friends. Um, mm -hmm. But Tristan, he and he also dabbles in strong man too. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you for that shout out, Tristan. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, but I always just look at the, I, cause I choose to be happy. Um, people don't, don't believe me, but I am an introvert also. I just choose not to be as just, you know, like my old coach, Kim Walford and mm -hmm. then like life events, I choose to be an extrovert and it's a better feeling to be happy. Mm -hmm. And I just like to help people, you know, I just, you know, cause I didn't have much of it when I started in the sport, like, yeah, it was there, but it's, it's different now than then. Mm -hmm. And I just want to give as much as I can give tips and help and just reach out. Um, like even in the gym yesterday, you know, there's this kid doing um, kegs for strongman, And I'm like, Hey, do you want me? Can I help you? Is what I asked him. Like, can we put the crash pads down and just throw the keg and I'll be the spotter for the keg so you can go faster and actually do your medley better. He's like, really? You'll help? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. You know, or yeah. like this other guy, he, you know, I talked to him and showed him a couple of tricks, how to load plates better for the sled and like helped him out with a shoulder press machine. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just like to help people every chance I get. And then Marty is my brother from another mother. So if yeah. I get to help him finally, heck yes. <laughs> and we had a blast. <laughs> oh, that's just the bubbly way. And I think too, like you want to mention Marty. I mean, he is another one of these people that is just doing everything at Power of Team Meets. He was, he was down there yes. in Austin at Nationals just a couple of weeks ago, and he was doing so many things. I mean, he was handling his lifters. He was helping with SBD stuff. He was just generally yep. helping with the setup of the whole event um, from the backdrops, you know, this, the, all the scaffolding and everything. Like he, he was unwrapping weights out of Aleco wrappers, you know, and stuff like that, because all that equipment was brand new out of the crate. And um, man, he's just a great guy. So um, it's yeah. no wonder that you two are friends and you have a very <laughs> similar personality of just being very outgoing and very helpful and just yeah. give back to the sport. And you're, you're two exactly. of the most inspiring people when it comes to that, about the kind of people that yeah. we have in the sport that make it go. Um, all right. So let's do some quick hitters and then we'll wrap this up. <laughs> okay. All right. First thing is, where did you grow up? Battle Creek, Michigan. All right. Yeah. But where do you live now? <laughs> I live in Omaha, Nebraska. Yes. <laughs> Omaha, Nebraska. Wow. The best city in the Midwest. You are so lucky. Um, all right. What was the first sport that you played? Um, I guess I would have to say volleyball when I was in junior high. And that's why I got into powerlifting because I didn't okay. make the high school volleyball team. So powerlifting was born. And so that this was growing up in Michigan. They had powerlifting in high school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's very cool. Cause I don't think they have that in Omaha that I know of. No, there's schools like, oh gosh, the Creighton Come prep, on. um, some, okay. some school North of here. I'm going blank on the name, something Omaha North. I don't know the name of it. Yeah, I'm going yeah, blank, yeah. but no, there's, there's high school meets and stuff. Um, they had a zillion kids two day competition in Fremont. It was it all single ply ago? in Michigan when you were growing um, up? So in high school, yeah, yes, it was it was raw. It was raw lifting technically in high school. Um, oh. It was Plainwell. Plainwell was the high school that took me under their wing. Um, Todd Miller back in the day, um, he saw the diamond in the rough, and mm -hmm. he reached out to me to make me uh, an equipped lifter. Okay. And so they went beyond the high school meets. The high school meets were just like the football coach association thing, yeah. not not sanctioned sanctioned like USAPL. He took me under his wing to learn single ply to be part of USAPL. Okay. Uh, back in the day. And then this was yeah. back before raw lifting was even really a thing, like on the IPF level, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. So mm. all the worlds I've been to were equipped only back mm. in the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. All right. Yeah. All right. What uh, what nicknames do you have? We know Bubbly. Bubbly. Is that the only B one? For short, only only a couple people say B. Uh -huh. You know, B Bubbly. Yeah, that's uh -huh. it. What, so, like your your closest friends and stuff, do they call you Bonica or they call you B or they call you Bubbly? Bubbly or Bonica. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> of course. Um, who are some people? Oh, I got them. Who are some people when you? No, that's fine. 
Uh, I mean, bubbly is a good one. Like that's very clear. We can, we can roll with that. Um, who are some people that when you were coming up in the sport that you looked up to? Oh, the old school lifters. Um, so back in the day, it was powerlifting USA magazines. That was our source of powerlifting back then. And so back then it's like, I'm going to say Eddie Cohn. I still message the man to this day. Um, Eddie Cohn, Tony Harris, Dave Ricks. Um, I looked up to like Liz Willett, um, like Jessica O'Donnell. Um, I was like, it's just all the old school people back in the day. Wade Hooper. Duh. Um, oh, Harriet Hall. Like, so I'm seeing these lifters in the magazines. And then back then, women's and men's nationals were separate. Um, then they were combined in 2008, seven. Okay. No, 2007 was the first time that men's and women's worlds was combined in Austria. Yeah, 2008, I think, is when. No. What was it? It's okay, right. anyway. Um... <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, you're and, like a historian. Um, you're a historian in the sport, so I'm happy to be getting a little these bit. names, <laughs> these names, and this information because this is not well-known stuff. So um, exactly, I appreciate because, you telling us this stuff. Well, because lifters nowadays they just focus on who won last year, who won two years ago. It's mm -hmm. like who cares? I don't care. And mm -hmm. I, <laughs> it's, you need to look at the people who built this sport. You yeah. know, you need to thank them who lifted years ago or the multiple champions back then. I don't care if you're a one-time, two-time national champ. I don't care mm -hmm. because you know what? I want to see how long you last in sport, your longevity, how long you, or if you give back. Yeah. And here's, here's a good one that uh, a certain lifter will love me to say, look at the world teams, men and women, who gives back to the sport. Just, mm -hmm. just do that in your own time and everybody else. Look at the roster who actually goes and helps people, who helps competitions, run the computer, temps, anything, setups. Mm -hmm. Look, don't don't All take right. me out yeah. of the equation. Just do your homework. But anyway, um, but those are lifters that I look up to back right. then. And, and when I came back in 2013, I still looked up to them. Oh, and Liz Willett, of course. You Liz mentioned Willett. her. You mentioned her. Um, what about on like the classic side, on the raw side? Well, there was a well, because it's it's not new. When I came back, you know, obviously, like I was looking up to Kim Walford and like Dave Ricks, Tony Harris, you know, the people that I knew that had been in the sport for a while, or even yeah. Priscilla Rebic. You know, she was always heavy, harder, and equipped, but then she started to dabble a little bit in raw. I look up to the people with longevity. Mm -hmm. I don't care about the one time, two timers. Yeah. The ones that have been in it the longest. Yeah, Those well, are the ones to look up to, in my opinion. Of course. Of course. That's yeah. what we're here for is to get your opinion on all this stuff. So yeah. I like it. I <laughs> You gave us a lot in that answer. I appreciate it. Um, Sorry. So do you watch sports? You watch any other sports? You watch football? I ain't got time for that. <laughs> I nice. work and work out and cook, clean Have you chores. Like, ever been I to a Nebraska time. game? Have you ever been to a Nebraska have... game? I gotta come never back. Been. I gotta come back. Okay. This fall, Game we gotta on. make it happen. I'll do it. We gotta make it happen. I'll do it. Um, what's your I'll favorite hobby? It. What's your favorite hobby outside of powerlifting then? Uh, well, I well, I live in an apartment, so I can't do it, but I really like flowers. I love to have a garden of okay. like you know, vegetables and stuff, and have flower beds and lots of flowers. I'm named after a flower. And okay. so like, I just, I, I truly enjoy being outdoors and stuff and just don't get to do much of it, but mm -hmm. that's what I like. Um, what is the um, Bonica flower? It's a Royal Bonica rose named after a rose. Wow. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So for people out there who have trouble with your name, <laughs> Bonica uh, yeah. <laughs> named after a rose, that'll make it a little bit easier to remember. Um, what about Pokemon? You're super into Pokemon. I was expecting to hear that as your hobby. Nerd. Okay, well that too. So, yeah, Were you I'm trying to hide it? You didn't want to be a nerd. Trying. <laughs> I love anime, and I'm a Pokemon nerd. Pokemon Go, Team See, Valor, baby. Here's the thing that you have. This this could be the bridge between Bonica, <laughs> the old school eleven time goat, and the new young lifters. They all love anime and Pokemon stuff. You and you're yeah. like old school into that. So I think you should start. You should start hanging out with these young kids. You got to give them a chance. They, they apparently have the same taste in uh, movies and stuff like that. 
Um, we'll what see, kind of we'll what kind of music do you listen to? Uh, I like my rock music, metal music, mm -hmm. mainly like for lifting. Like I bounce around. I love dubstep. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll go into country or some girly stuff or pop, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You know, Latin music. Yeah, yeah. I bounce around, but mainly well, rock and metal. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And what kind of movies? Like, what what genre of movies do you like the most? I guess anime. I don't, you already... I, don't, I don't watch that many movies. <laughs> okay. I guess anime is not movies. Well, like, because like they're short, they're like 30 mm -hmm. minutes long. Like movies is just like, you know, I was proud of myself. I went and watched Creed three in theaters the last week. That, oh. I'm proud of myself. Nice. Um, the time before that was when the um, Demon Slayer movie was out and I had to look it up. I'm like, yeah, that was 2021. Um, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I didn't go to movie theater for two years. Um, yeah. I'm I kind of the don't... same way. What, what, what genres do you kind of gravitate towards? I guess like uh, animation and uh, sci-fi type stuff or. I don't, I don't like scary movies and kind of okay. everything. Wait. Okay. This would be another fun one. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Okay. I don't watch the superhero movies. What is it? DC and what? What's Marvel. The yeah. yeah. Marvel. Yeah. I'm like, I'm lost with all that. I'm like, I don't know anything. Okay. So that's where you lost the kids again. You lost them again. I know. Right, you had them I with the anime. Don't... You lost them. You lost them with that. But that's good. There's, just... there's probably Wonder Woman. Okay. Nice. <laughs> How was it? I about to run. I liked it. Um, I don't know. I wow, I don't know what I truly I kind of list watch a little bit of everything. Like I love it when David Attenborough, when he's a narrator on like Animal mm -hmm. Planet stuff, you know. I like watching like the PP people, like Asian films. I've watched that on Netflix. Um mm -hmm. did, did of course the anime and then um you know, like uh I, like some action i don't like like i was like i don't know See, oh, that's good stumped. that's a good answer that's a good answer <laughs> terrible um, answer. <laughs> what's your go-to when you go to a nice restaurant what's your go-to order oh i want to go to an asian restaurant and i just want to ooh, what do i like i just want to get a yummy bowl of ramen or something all right <laughs> i don't care yeah. about steak dinners Dude, yeah, no, I don't care about steak dinners. Don't wow. care. No, nope. you could not be less <laughs> Nebraskan um, if you don't care about like, steak dinners. I like it if somebody cooks it for me at home. Um, I want to go out for it. I want to in dine you in. Want something more interesting so, when you go out that you don't do on your yes, own. that I can't yeah. make at home. Exactly. Yeah. That is kind of so a Nebraska like, thing, actually, because a grocery store you can get really good steaks and stuff. So yeah, so I'd rather do it at home. home. What would be like if you had like a fast food? What's your go-to fast food craving that you have, if any? Because you eat pretty healthy, I think. You don't really go to fast food. I don't crave it. I only eat it if I'm on a road trip because mm. I, I can't just do it. Then my body rejects it and I get sick. Mm. And so like I have to be like super mentally prepared and knowing that I'm going to have to, like a friend of mine and I, we call it poison food. Like So we give our body poison food every once in a while. Yeah. But if I'm <clears throat> busy on the go all day the go-to is just a mcchicken sandwich and okay. fries just do it to get something in my body some type of fuel and keep going but right. yeah and do you do you drink at all any alcohol adult adult beverages as we call them no i've been a good girl last drink i had was on thanksgiving okay and what before would be that your, was october what would be your go-to order for an adult drink a uh, cocktail or a beer or what? Oh, I don't like beer. I want a cider. Okay. Whatever nice. cider the place may have. Cider. I don't care about beer. That's Matt Gary's go-to order as well. So next time yeah. you see Matt Gary, you can have a cider with him. <laughs> Just cider. Or if I'm at home, I like to make yogurt soju. That's my home go-to. Okay. Interesting. Nice. You'll have to put your recipe mm -hmm. up on uh, on Instagram. <laughs> I Post Chefy. <laughs> exactly. <I will>. Exactly. <laughs> Got to get that dub first. All right. Yeah. Last question. Last question is how long do you expect to compete in powerlifting? Do you think, are you going to go full on Dave Ricks and just go on like deep, deep into the later, later masters? Like what is, is he like a, he might just be an M2 
or maybe he's an M3. He's in his 60s. Okay, so that's M3 then, right? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, you're going to go full on through M3, M4? Mm -hmm. That's a sport you can do your whole life. Like I tell other people, you know, like um, you're the, the awesome, you know, football player, basketball. I don't care whichever sport you want to pick. Like, yeah. great. Awesome. All-star in high school. Awesome. You got that college scholarship. And it's like, now you have to pray that you get into the MLB or NFL, whatever. But I'm yeah. if you don't, what yeah. are you going to do? How are you going to fulfill that competitiveness for the rest of your life? Like, there, you know, yeah, this should have some local intramural thing or something. I don't know, a little league something. Okay, hope you can do that. Yeah. But powerlifting, it's there your whole life. It, yeah. And I just want to keep going and just keep going and so, longevity and playing the game. So for all the MLB, NBA, uh, NHL, NFL players out there, <laughs> hey, come on over to powerlifting. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you can do it for a long, long time. You can go play your sport and then come over and uh, and then yeah. do this for the rest of your life. Yeah. yeah, and there's always competitions to go to. Always a goal. Always something to strive for. Yeah, you know. Exactly. And then in those sports, you're limited. You yeah. know, and yeah. I don't want to be limited. I want something to do. You know, I like having a goal to fight for something. Yeah, we all do. Know? I think that's one of the coolest things about our sport too, is that anyone can do it. Um, you and me could be lifting at the same gym and just lifting yeah. like, you know, hundreds of kilos different, but um, still all good. <laughs> still hey. can hang out and we're still doing the same thing, you know? Yes. That's, cool. that's what I love. At it's all ages, you know, it it's all sizes. It, yeah. It's like, it's just a sport for everybody. My favorite age categories are the older women, you know, mm -hmm. they're finding their inner badass selves, you know, cause take them back to their twenties. They're just yeah. told to be stay at home housewives. Yeah. Now they're older and now they're living life on the platform. They're my favorite. Totally. totally they're my totally. favorite. Yeah. It's awesome. So, all right, well, let's end it on a positive note then. That was amazing <laughs> conversation, Bonica. Um, super <laughs> grateful to you for taking the time on a Sunday 13 days out from Sheffield to come and talk on the power of the America podcast. So yeah. are there, is there anyone that you want to thank any sponsors, coaches, anyone that you want to thank before we sign off? Well, of course, like SPD, thank you for being my sponsor for many, many years. Super grateful for you. Um, Cho Buckland, we've been athlete and coach for, I think, five and a half, six years now, something like that. Wow. Sticking to me, you know, putting up with me and my sassiness. <laughs> <laughs> but um, also, of course, huge thanks, Omaha Barbell, you know, the owners, Brett and Amber, you mm -hmm. know, like they're amazing supporters, always there for me. Um, even on my down days, um, they're there. And of course, all my teammates, you know, at the gym, like I said earlier, Zach, Madison, Brandon, Danny, Luke, Kevin, Jared, Alex, you know, AJ, like the list just keeps going of all the people at the gym that helped me get to where I am now. It yeah. is thanks to them. Um, you know, of course, there's my other circles like Marty, Mike and Ashley, you know, in Texas and Aram in Texas. Of course, Jeff and James, you yeah. know, Jeff Douglas, Je like they check in on me every few weeks. How am I doing? What's going on? I can't um, wait to get you and Jeff on, so a, on a, on a <laughs> equipped lifting round table. <laughs> Two of the best yeah. characters in the whole sport. Oh, he's had to put up with me quite a bit. I'm, I'm very different from his son, Newt, yeah, yeah. you know, but still, but even on the quick side, guy. they support me, you know, mm -hmm. even equip lifters, the Boston crew, they, they have my back. Yeah. Um, you know, Kelsey and Bavel and Joe and Luis, you know, and yeah. others, you know, even people USAPL, they mm -hmm. still got my back, even yeah. with the stupid split, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there, the list just keeps going. And like, there's never enough thank you or shout out. Cause I feel bad leaving people out. I hope nobody gets upset. If I leave anybody out. No, it's all good. You're only <laughs> but, human. You can only remember so many names at once. Yeah. It was all coming at once, you know, but yeah, yeah. especially Marty, you know, he's always there. And my yeah. friend Jordan, you know, out in Colorado, he's like on like daily, weekly checking in on me and stuff. Like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it just keeps going. You have a lot of supporters. You got yeah. a lot of people rooting for you, Bonica. And so we all yeah. can't wait to see what you do at Sheffield in 13 days. Um, and I'm really grateful again for your time. So with that, Thank let's go you. ahead and say peace out on this one. All right. Adios, everybody. Toodles. Right. Peace out. <laughs>